I don't know, Coach. I truly don't know. I truly don't know who it is. But however, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna treat it like I'm the head coach here, and I'm gonna take the blame for it because it's not. <laughs> I, we got, we got to. I gotta find a way around that. That's not supposed to be happening. It's not part of the game plan. Oh, it's all good, man. You don't have to take the blame, man. Sometimes you know this modern technology stuff is is crazy. Maybe they wanted me to get outside here yeah, instead of yeah. in, in the office. So. It's all good. Yeah. I'll give you. If it, I'll give you guys a little view of, of what I'm looking at. The golf course right here. Here's beautiful the, sight. Do you golf? Go. Yeah, there's some Canadian geese right out here on the on on the trying to tee off. You see that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm coming. I'm when these things clear up. I'm coming to visit soon. I hope. You got that guest room ready for me, Coach. I got it. I got it ready for you, man. Come on through. Perfect. 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 Um, if it does, if it, if we do happen to lose connection again, Coach, and I, I mean, we're three for three at this point. So if it does, what I'll do is I'll just FaceTime you, and we'll do it from the FaceTime. I think the connection will maybe be a little bit easier. Um, but I also don't want to take up all your time. So if we have some more issues, then maybe we need to reconvene or whatever the case. But we can just go from there. Sounds great, man. Sounds great. You know, I'm I'm always um, up to adapt and overcome, right? We uh, that's what else? There's no other options. That's right. There's that's no right. other We're options. Always win. Got to winners win. Yeah. Winners that's win. right. I'm ready. Uh, um, you were telling you were telling us about Desert Storm, and uh, can you start? Do you remember where you were at? Just as far as your your uh, the uh, what you were in charge of, and at a young age, just being having to make decisions, and it, it enabling it for you to grow and uh, have experiences that led you to kind of where you yeah, are it, and who it, you are it, now. You know, it was a it was a time that when I went over, I was uh, I was what, what, what we call a fuels expediter when I got over there. I was in charge of about 10 guys and ladies. Uh, I think we had one lady and the rest were, were men. And um, my job was to make sure the fuel got on got on the airplane so they can go back up and, uh, and, and you know, survey and bomb or whatever they had to do. So that was, I was on the flight line. And then I did some other stuff while I'm over there that, at that time you weren't allowed to talk talk about and and I'm probably still not going to talk about. So uh mm -hmm. so but those times were uh you know it was crazy days over there because you only had one day off. You 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 were around the same people every day for 24 hours basically. You know you you ate, slept and and worked, you know, um together and um you know, actually, the place that I lived at was was in Cobar Towers, and you guys can and ladies can Google that. The building that you know it, that I lived in uh, after I left, it, it, it got blown up. So um, those were the type of conditions that I lived in, and and those days weren't fun. You know, I wasn't. I, I don't really think about them too often because um, I got to see some stuff that most people don't really should see, and and um, but I'm glad we. we you know, it, it was a great experience. It was a great learning experience. We all got back safely, and um, um, some I learned greatly. You know, you couldn't, you, you can't lose there. You know what I mean? You lose, you die. You can't just reset button mm -hmm. there. So you can't, you can't like, okay, we reset the Fortnite game or whatever. So, um, so, but um, so you had to be right every day. You had to win every day. You had to win every battle, and. Mm -hmm. um, and so those were the experiences that I shared uh, sometimes with the guys, uh, the, the coach, the kids that I coach and the, and the, and the coaches that I coach with. Yeah, I, I have to imagine that when you tell those stories that the kids are extremely responsive and it probably gives you, um, it allows for you guys to become closer. And because um, obviously the most important thing within those relationships, coach player relationships is respect. And for you to go over there and do that, um, it's almost like you, you, you kind of got to listen to what I'm talking about because I've been in some stuff that um, is on a whole different level than competing in a basketball game. Right. It, 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 they do. They do. They are. Uh, you can see them become very attentive. Um, and, you know, so.
when that when I'm tell I'm losing I, you a little bit, Coach. I'm losing, I'm losing you a little bit. Uh, you, you're, yeah, you're kind of, you, you were, you were, fro you were, I can hear you a bit, but it's not, it's not clear. Uh-huh. What about now? You might have to, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a little, it's a little better now. It's still a little choppy. Okay. okay. I don't know why. But it's better. It's, it's this is happening. It's happening before. Yeah, I haven't had that. I haven't had the issue, so. um. You got you got you got to pay that Wi-Fi bill, Coach. Don't be messing around me? with your cable provider. Yeah, I don't know what it is, man. Yeah, can you hear me? I'm getting good cable everywhere else. Uh, I got you back now. Uh, can you so talk to me about you know you getting back to Arizona, and I'm sure throughout those years you're still thinking about basketball to a certain extent. What was the extent that and I, and I could be wrong, but what what was your thoughts as far as moving forward in your life and your goals? And obviously, basketball came across or came up as something that you were passionate about and um, wanted to see where it could take you. Well, once once I started coaching for Boo Williams in Hampton, Virginia, in '97, mm -hmm. um, you know, I got the bug of coaching. And um, when I got the assignment out to Phoenix, Arizona, I, before I went, I went into Boo's office. And uh, I talked with him and I asked him, I said, hey, Boo, do you think I can, uh, uh, I have what it takes to be a college coach? And he mm -hmm. told me yes. He said, most of the guys I come in this office, I tell them no. But he says, I really think you do. I, he said he watched me a lot uh, working with kids and working with them and teaching them the game. And, and he said, uh, you know, I really think you can. He said, I'm going to help you. I'm going to do all I can to help you. Had you, you know, done any coaching before? What's that? Had you done any coaching prior to Boo, or that was kind of like oh, you're just wet yeah, behind the years? Was, yeah, that was the first. That was the first, you know. And uh, and how'd you uh, get connected once, with that opportunity? When I got stationed in Virginia, uh, my supervisor was coaching for Boo, and he asked me to be his associate. I mean, his assistant coach. Okay. And um, then I went to Boo's tournament that April, that in the spring. And, you know, John Thompson walked through the door. Krzyzewski walked through the door. And then back then, they didn't have coaches in one area of the gym. Coaches could mingle with the parents. And I, I sat up there and watched them do that. And I said, you know, I could do that. You know, that's that, that's easy. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I like being around people. I like uh, interacting with people. And um, so. You know, so from that day on, and then once Boo told me that I could do it, no one could tell me different. You know, he said, you got to get your degree. I didn't have my degree at that time. So I got stationed out here in Phoenix uh, at Luke Air Force Base. I got a divorce. I got full custody of my children. I took a lunchtime class. I took an internet class. I took an evening class when, when I wasn't coaching. And... Um, and I got my degree. I graduated with honors from Park University. And, and what, uh, what was in what capacity were you coaching as far as AU, uh, high yeah. school? Well, when I got out here, the first year I coached AAU for Arizona Stars, that was a Nike program back then. They didn't mm -hmm. have EYBL then at that time, but they were a Nike program. That's where Mike Bibby came out of and a host of other kids came out of there. And, uh, and, and then what the was your spot? What was your spot at, in, with that program? I was. I started out with uh, being a twelve-year-old coach. Okay. You know, and um, uh, my son was at that age, so so I coached there. And then the second year, I asked him if I could. I was driving all the way over from the West Valley to the East Valley, so I asked him if I could start a couple teams in the West Valley, so I didn't have to travel. And I did it at a high school called Trevor Brown. And the high school coach, who I was supposed to have lunch with today, uh, um, um, he uh, 
he offered me a, a freshman coaching job. So uh, on the third try, on the, I told him no the first two times. And then on the third time, he said, hey, I said, can I get the keys to the gym? Because I just wanted to coach AAU. You know, at that point, Boo had, mm -hmm. you know, I had got excited about what Boo was doing, and I thought that was the path, you know. And and then uh, he said, yeah, you can have the keys to the gym. So I said, all right, I'll be your freshman coach. And I was still in the Air Force. So I was coaching AAU, freshman, wherever the ball was bouncing, I was at. Mm -hmm. And um, the high school team that I, I coached at was really good at that time. They were ranked 40th in the country, had three Division One players. And uh, then uh, my AAU team, I, I got with Anthony Ray, and we started the Arizona Magic, which was uh, – I left the Arizona Stars, and we started the Arizona Magic, which was underneath the Compton Magic with Atopo and Emma. And uh, – we became really good. We had Jared Bayless, Lewis Amundsen, both of them played 10 years. Uh, uh, Jared played 11 years in the NBA. Lewis how, played 10 years. How far along were the Magic um, in their program as far as how long have they been running their show for? And then um, Coach Ray, Aaron Ray, I don't know who it is, but I'm assuming Coach yeah. Ray. Um, he Was he the one – he was connected to – um, the Compton Magic, and you guys were able to partner up like that? Yeah, he knew he knew uh, Ato, so we got together with that. You know, before that, we were the Arizona Pump and Run with the Pump Brothers, and then mm -hmm. we switched over real quick. We were only with them for a year, and then we went with uh, uh, Ato. You know, and they, they had a strong program back then. Ato's been doing it for a long time, man. Mm -hmm. You know, um, for probably 30 years now, almost 30 years, so um, so then we started the Arizona Magic and became really good. And Lute Olsen started recruiting Jared Bayless. And me and Luke, Coach Olsen, got real close. And um, he was he was a great mentor for me. And Atope was a great mentor for me. And we, you know, we go to the big-time tournament, which that was the big tournament back then. That's before the shoe, the shoe company circuits, uh, where all the top teams played. And we... We lost in, in, in overtime to go to the Final Four. And where was, where was it at, Coach? 316. That was at uh, that was Sonny Vicario's big time tournament in Las Vegas. Okay. Okay. Everybody wanted to go to everybody wanted to play in that. So we finished in the in the lead eight out of three hundred and thirty six teams, which was the highest showing ever from an Arizona team. And um, that's when college coaches started taking notice of me and I was networking with them and uh, and you know my dream was taken off at that point. So um, when did uh, when, also, when did when, sorry excuse me sorry I just want to ask ahead. you something. When did you notice or have a feeling that from a recruiting standpoint that you just had a knack for being able to build strong relationships, genuine relationships, and um, get people to believe in uh, your goals and aspirations for yourself, not only yourself but the programs uh, and the teams that you coached. Um, you know, at that age, during that time, you know, I was, we had the top AAU program in Arizona and at that time, and we had to go get those kids. Mm -hmm. We all our kids were division one on our first team mm -hmm. and our second team, you know, we had some really good kids as well. And that was unheard of back in, you know, back in Arizona, back in from an Arizona team back in those days. And, um, how so many, were you, were you guys, were you guys, were you guys practicing? How often were you practicing? And then. How were kids coming from like all over this, like all over the state, damn near? Um, all over the state, we had a kid. We had kids from everywhere, and mm -hmm. um, uh, from all over the state. And we would practice. I would practice them like a high school game, like a high school team. You know, we would practice. We knew. We, I mean, we ran plays. We we changed defenses. You know, we they were they were. Uh, you know, it was it was run like a high school program. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they were they were really a good team, one of the best teams ever, in my opinion, the best team ever to come out of Arizona. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were beating teams. We went over to L.A. one time, played six games against six different teams and beat them all. And that's uh, that was unheard of back in those days, because L.A. is such a strong, strong uh, recruiting base for uh, for basketball. So, and what was what, what, what in that specific? Uh, instance when you go over and you win six games, what's that environment like? Because I'm sure the games were meaningful and there was talent all over all over the place. Yeah, it was it was crazy environment. We were at the Warrior Center, 
in in uh, Orange County, and uh, the environment was just unbelievable. Because a lot of people used to go and watch those games at those times. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, you know, um, it was just crazy, crazy atmosphere, a lot of trash talking. That's when H Squad was really good with Rick Isaacs and uh, Belmont Shores had a great team. Atope had a great team with the Compton Magic. Uh, he had kids going to UCLA in different spots. And, and then for us to come over there and win those games was, was, was big. Rockfish was really good back then. Uh, SoCal All-Stars, who have had probably the greatest A team ever, you know, with Kevin Love and, 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 those, and that group. So um, they were all really good. We didn't actually play against them that, that weekend, but um, it, was, it was great. So for us to be able to play with those teams, it, 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 it built a lot of confidence for us. So, mm -hmm. And then I retired from the Air Force. And I became a head high school coach here in Phoenix at South Mountain High School. And we took over a really bad program that was only 4-17 and 17 when we took over in the inner city school. It was a large school, but had great history, but just fell on hard times as far as the basketball programs go. Um, and, and we go, our second year, we go 29-4, and four, win a state title. And I'm really proud of that group because we also raised the GPA from, from 2.0 to, to – um, to up to over three three zero for us all three programs freshman JV and varsity. Now, when so, you got when you when you took over that program, are you are you rolling with this the same coaches that you're doing AAU with, or did you um, how did you have a different staff? No, I I uh, hired a whole different staff. Um, they were two two middle school coaches in the area, and they were doing great things, and and um, I went and watched them watched them coach and um, I liked what they did and, uh, and, uh, and they were really good with the kids and uh, um, so I hired them on because I knew they'd work hard for me and they were really proud of the area mm -hmm. you know um, um, one of them was Keely Mims another one was Ernest Pouncey and they, they really really helped me uh, uh, for those two years that we, were, that we were there I mean we totally changed the culture you know, it was an inner city school. It had gang, gangs in the school and everything. And we changed the culture and, and won a state title. And we won the state title by 21 points. That's how good that team was. It was just a really, really good, relentless defense. They, were, they would get after it and had pride and took a lot of pride in winning. And I can imagine that you were able to take over your first high school job and win a state championship because of, the experiences from the Air Force, is, the Air Force, and um, just the integrity and the loyalty and the grit and the will um, and the determination, and then the, you got to carry yourself a certain way for kids like that um, to trust in somebody to lead them. Uh, so I got to I got to imagine that it, the experience paid off quickly. It did, you know, and they 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 knew I was connected to college coaches as well. Uh, they knew my background as a military person. You know, I take all the core values of the Air Force and apply them into my coaching and, and uh, apply them into the kids that, uh, that I coach and, and, and even uh, the coaching staff. You know, we mm -hmm. ran it as a professional. Uh, uh, we were professional at all times. You know, mm -hmm. everything we did, we, we, we uh, another thing I, I, I'm real big on is checklist. You know, um, we're perf always perfecting the process and we, we go into every area of coaching and every area of dealing with young people. And we're constantly updating the checklist till we perfect it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and, and it, that's what's happening in coaching on the court as well. If, if, if we put in a play that don't work, well, we throw it out. So we put in some plays that do work, you know what I mean? And we're constantly evolving and, and, and getting better at what we do in, in every aspect of it. Conditioning, mm -hmm. I know you're big on conditioning. We're, we, we were doing it. We perfected the process of, of, of attaining high, high standard of academics. Mm -hmm. You know, when we took over, it was bad. You know, so I got with all the teachers. I created a study hall that was uniquely different than, than what they were used to. And we made sure the kids learned because we showed them the importance of learning. 
importance mm-hmm. to get a college education. I went up and educated the counselors because at that time, what many kids going to college from there. So they didn't know the process. They didn't know they had to do so many, get so many credits in so many times. And, you know, you'd be surprised at the schools that don't really produce a lot of division one players. They don't understand the process of getting, getting accepted in a university, especially on a, on a division one scholarship. Mm-hmm. So, um, we, we did all of that, you know, and um, so my Air Force background has helped me greatly. Um, my experience on the AAU circuit has helped me greatly. And then my my two years as assistant coach in, in, in high school, I learned the processes there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then when I became a head coach, it, it all, all came into one as a high school head coach to win a state title. And then from there, I went on to college. How many of those kids – uh, went went on to college, coach from the from that group. Um, from um the high school team, I believe four of them went. One of them went Division One. Um, who played at Loyola Marymount. That's Sean Deadwilder. He's he's doing really great. He's actually still in school. He's at law school in D.C. wants to, wants to be president. Wants to be the next president of the United States. So that's wonderful. He's in D.C. and and doing great things. Uh, Jeff Battle graduated from Arizona State. I mean, we've had we we have some kids that all attained their degree, uh, and then my and developed and developed as young as young men. Yes, yes, and they're mm-hmm. in their thirties now. That's what's crazy about it. That was we won. What year state was title it? No six. Yeah, so I was. Uh, and everything. I was. Mm, 18 and 06 so kind of just around their age you have been coaching me yep very very true wow um still a young man i'm a young man coach yes (laughs) (laughs) depending on who you ask (laughs) i can't but i can't believe that i'm working with kids that i'm 20 years older than isn't that amazing unbelievable and i don't feel too far removed from them which is i i believe is a good thing it is a good um, and and that I, I kind of have this conversation with a lot of people when we speak about it, but that was one of the reasons why I felt the conviction to uh, step away and be fruitful in a lane where um, I'm I'm like big bro, you know, I'm big bro, but at the same time, now you have to respect my experiences, um, and there's non-negotiables that I'm going to give you. And I'm going to hold you to a certain standard that you're going to have to um, try to comply with because I know what it looks like. And I'm not too far removed where the kids are like, man, get your old behind out of here. It's like, you know, it's I'm it's still very fresh. Um, So that was one of the reasons why I felt confident in um, stepping away for the time being. Um, Coach, let me ask you, because again, and I don't want, and, and I know this, you know, people talk about you recruiting, 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 and, I, and it's better to be talked about than not to be talked about. And I know that's not the only thing that comes with your person um, and your ability and your characteristics. Um, when you were coaching the AAU basketball and you were still learning uh, the ins and outs of everything that goes on, how were you able to and what are the things that you did? Obviously, I think a lot of it is natural, but what are some of the instances where uh, your approach to getting to know these coaches and, and, and building strong, genuine, real relationships? Because so many guys don't understand that it's not just about networking. Um, it's about being fruitful to even to those coaches. What can you provide um, and again, in a genuine with your characteristics for them, how can you help them? How can you help them get better? Um, so. Well, I'm glad you asked that question. And I, I, I like to uh, I'll, I'll talk about the recruiting side and I want to go back to talking about, you know, uh, being pigeonholed as a recruiter mm-hmm. so that people think that I that's all I do is recruit. <laughs> I don't coach, which is far as from the truth. You know, mm-hmm. um, I do scouts, too. You know, I have did it for a long time, but. Anyway, mm-hmm. so so the, the question that you're asking, though, I want to answer, answer that question. So when I was coming through, you know, a lot of AAU coaches and high school coaches don't get to know the coaches that they're playing against because they're competing against them. But mm-hmm. I made it sure 
that I went over and got to know the coach that I was coaching against because one day I might want one of his players or need one of his players, you know? So mm -hmm. I started building relationships with all the AAU coaches, all the high school coaches, you know? Um, I saw a high school – I went to the New Mexico State game last night, and uh, there was a junior college coach there who's, who's at uh, Chandler Gilbert Junior Community College, and he was a high school coach back then. And we had a great talk. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. you know, that's because of the relationships that we build. You know, we're all in this together to help kids. So I, uh, you know, and I, I think a key for, for, for young guys that are in the recruiting business that are coming up to young coaches is, just like you said, to be genuinely uh, appreciative of people and be, be their friend. More than, you know, I always say this is more than just basketball. Like, mm -hmm. if I tell the kid, when I start recruiting a kid, you got me for life, whether you come there or not. You know, mm -hmm. me and Zion Williamson, we still talk, you know. Um, but that's, uh, also a nat that's also a natural gift. Yes, because I, I think because a lot of people don't do that. Oh, you're not coming to my school to heck with you. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't, you can't have that, you know. Um, there's a lot of guys that I didn't get that I'm still close with to this day. So we're, we're going to miss on kids and we're going to get kids along mm -hmm. with, but maybe I didn't get one kid this time around. Maybe I'll get a kid the next time around from that AU or high school program, mm -hmm. you know? So you just got to take your loss if you didn't get the kid and move on. You know, there's so many reasons why we don't get a kid to come to our school. And it's not all in my power, you know, or your power or anybody's power, you know? It mm -hmm. could be, you know, the kid just liked another school better or or maybe uh, a, mi a million, a million different things. Yeah. He liked the head coach better than the, your head coach. You know, there's a whole yes. lot of things that go into it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, you know, some some stuff, you know, you'd be surprised at why they chose the schools that they chose. I wouldn't you be know? surprised. I, I, what, you know, I, I, you know, I'm not surprised that's why you have the portal. So like over a thousand kids. Mm -hmm. Because they make mistakes coming out of high school, mm -hmm. you know, because they're listening to the wrong people or have the wrong advice and, and just the craziness of college basketball recruiting. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to speak on uh, the other topic, which is people and people only know what they know, right? Like that's just they just know what they know. People who know, know. Um, right. That that's not the case. But if you wanted to elaborate a little bit and speak on it, that'd be cool. You, you're talking about, you know, me being pigeonholed as a recruiter. Because mm -hmm. yeah. you're not the only one, right? You're not the only guy that's pigeonholed like that. They say yeah. you, they say you might be the best one, but there's a number yeah. of guys who are pigeonholed in uh, being really good recruiters. You, you, you're right. You know, I've had great success in recruiting. So I get the title of being a good recruiter. And I'm very thankful for that. I'm very mm -hmm. You know, I've worked extremely hard to get that. So, but most people think, well, he's a great recruiter. Well, he must not, he must not do scouts. He must not do coaching. You know, he just recruits, mm -hmm. you know, and that's so farthest from the truth. I still get my one third of the scouts each year, you know, and the other two assistants get their, their third. Mm -hmm. And I still, uh, you know, I, I've coached at the Pac-12 for 11 years and then one year in the SEC. We're going up against the best coaches in the world. You know what I mean? I know exactly what they do because I'm scouting them. I know mm -hmm. all their plays. I know when they call timeouts, when they don't. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I know how their subbing pattern is. Mm -hmm. I know what plays works for them, which plays don't. So I, I know just as much as anybody else knows that's going in the, in the coaching, uh, the game. You know what I mean? I relay that to my head coach. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, just because I'm out, out recruiting a, a Lonzo Ball or, a, or a Jonah Bolden from Australia don't mean I still don't have responsibilities of getting that scout done. You know what I mean? You mm -hmm. know, so I, that's a big discredit. You know, um, when I was with Jerry Stackhouse last year, Stack even mentioned it in an article saying that, you know, I do way more than just recruit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and I'm very thankful that I get the reputation of recruiting. But I, on the other hand, I get so disappointed that they think that's all I do. And um, yeah, but who's know, they at the end of the day? Well, it's it's, it's sometimes it's uh, 
um, people that just don't know, you know, he's, he's a, he's a great recruiter and he's a, he's a, uh, you know, um, so he, he, you know, we, we get pigeonholed, minorities get pigeonholed, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. minorities on the staff, I'm native American, you know, so, so minorities on the staff, well, all they do is recruit. All they do is go get the minority players, which is mm -hmm. so farthest from the truth, man. You know, mm -hmm. some, some programs might be like that. You know what I mean? Where the guy, all he does is recruit. But man, I, if, if, if that's all I did, I'd have a lot less gray hairs. Just put it that way. Because I'd get a lot better sleep at night. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, as you know, them scouts are difficult. You know, and they take up a lot of time because you got to watch. You know, I'm watching five game films and in between calling, calling recruits, in between doing this, even taking out the trash and my home responsibilities and everything else, you know, um, mm -hmm. not watching the football game on Sunday because I got to watch game film, you know, and break it down on all their baseline out of bounds plays, sideline side out of bounds plays and, you know, what defenses they run and stuff like that. You know, so my X's and O game is really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we ran over 200 plays this past year at Vanderbilt. So, uh, you know, they were all NBA plays. My 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 playbook is deep. You besides, know, my X's and O's is deep. Besides the, be, besides the recruiting talent that you have, um, what are your what do you think you'd say your your other one or two sh strengths are? Like, sh this is my strength. Um, and then maybe mention a flaw that you've continued to work on as uh, your career has developed. I think my biggest strength is influencing young people, young, young, young uh, players to play hard, mm -hmm. influencing young players to see the future. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? To getting young players to, to run a play to precision. You know, I think that's, that's my biggest strength uh, mm -hmm. to have, have uh be able to lead you know from where i'm at you know mm -hmm. um to be able to make a positive impact not only um on the court but in their lives you know what i mean so i think those are my strengths my weaknesses is i've hadn't had an opportunity to be a head coach mm -hmm. you know what i mean all i need is that opportunity mm -hmm. so i keep striding to get better better myself keep perfecting myself you know i've had interviews so I'm very thankful for those. I think I'll have a great shot this spring from mm -hmm. what people are telling me and my network base is telling me, you know what I mean? But just given the opportunity, I haven't had the opportunity. So I keep perfecting my craft, keep mm -hmm. perfecting my craft. I don't know, you know, uh, the last time I called timeouts, we want to stay title. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. but I still got to perfect it because I haven't done it in a while. Mm -hmm. I, I got to work the Pangos camp a couple of weeks ago uh, with the, at the Penguins All-American camp. So I got to call a couple of timeouts, which were fun. And you know I know I mean? that feels good. I know it yeah, feels it good. Yeah, it feels great. It feels great, mm -hmm. it get, it, you know, to get to get in the huddle. So that's me perfecting my craft because mm -hmm. I was able to do some coaching. The week before that, Dino's had another event that I coached in. And, and a lot of it is to be around the kids. You know, I love being around the kids and having fun with them and stuff like that and being able to coach. But it's also, I did that to work on my craft of being able to, okay, in this situation, should I call timeout? You know what I mean? Or in this situation, mm -hmm. should, should we change defenses? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, or should we, should we put on a press, even though we didn't press in the Pankos All-American camp? You know, but, uh, you know, those things go through your mind while you're coaching, though. You know what I mean? What's, what, what's, what's going to be your philosophy um, with changing defenses? and how often because I, I know I've coached for some guys who kind of just do what they do and it doesn't involve too much uh, unknown and then I also have studied some uh, great coaches who throw the whole book at you and uh, what, what would be what are you, what's your philosophy as far as that goes we'll have a a, a strong man-to-man -man base but I'll change defenses I love changing defenses uh, we'll, we'll we'll show some different different um, um, uh, presses. You know, I'm going to press full three quarters and half. I'll trap out of it, out of some of it, run and jump, some of it, you know. But we'll, we'll be, you know, we'll run some one-three-one half-court trap. You know, we're going to give you a different look. 
uh, we want you to prepare. I want you to prepare. You're going to have to the, – the, the scout plan for against me is you're going to have to – you're going to have to go over some things in practice, and that's going to take away from what you guys do in preparation. Mm -hmm. You're not just going to say, well, they just run man-to-man -man in the 2-3 zone. It's going to be way more than that. You're going to have to – you're going to have to uh, say, oh, okay, how, how are we going to beat that one three one trap? Because we had that thing going at Oregon State was tough. Tough, especially during conference where you're going to play a Thursday-Saturday game. That Saturday game is a one-day turnaround. That's hard to get ready for a team that you're not used to playing the one three one. You know, mm -hmm. we used to win that Saturday game a lot, you know. And, we, and then I'll and have we just – and, and, and Ivy League is uh, Friday, Saturday. So right. very very similar, depending on who 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 the teams are you're playing, um, what their philosophies and principles are. So it could be tough. Very very true. You know, if you don't see that one three one, them guards, especially small guards, they got to look over top of six ten kid that's out front. It's hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. Hard hard to deal with. So we'll do that, and we'll have some change in defenses. You know, we'll we'll do two, some two two one back to, you know, man. Uh, you know, I might I might say we'll do a matchup zone, or if they go down the left side of the court, we might go we might go uh, man to man. If they come mm -hmm. down the right side of the court, we might stay in the zone. Mm -hmm. Got to prepare yeah, well, for that. Well, depending on who your personnel are, <laughs> who your personnel is, because uh, you're gonna have to have some guys who are prepared and who can lead. Uh, and I'm sure that if you don't, then you might dumb it down a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you got to go to the strengths of your team. Coach, what that's would you say? That's where you're always perfecting the checklist. Nope. Yeah. Um, coach, what, what, what would you say to some of the longtime assistant coaches, associate head coaches um, who are in very similar situations as you as far as working for a number of head guys or been with somebody who – uh, they've been with for, say, 14 years, whatever the case, um, and who are looking for their shot, looking for their opportunity. Uh, what, what would you say, just whatever's coming to mind about, you know, st sticking, to the, sticking to the script and trusting the process and persevering, et cetera? Yeah, you got you to gotta persevere. You got you to gotta persevere. And I'm sorry I'm walking over here. I'm getting some... Uh juice in my phone uh, and just you know the key is and it's very hard to do it's easier to do you know if the guys that want to be you got to get with the right head coach you know you got to get with a head coach that's going to teach you uh, be a great mentor to you and uh, uh, it's going to going to advocate for you becoming a head coach so um, I think those things are very very important but you, you got to persevere in this game. It's not it's not a fair game. This 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 is a ruthless business, and mm -hmm. uh, you can do everything right and be out of a job. You can do everything wrong and be promoted in a job. Mm -hmm. So it's just like life. It's not fair. So you have to just go, roll with the punches and keep keep fighting and keep doing the right thing, and eventually you'll get your opportunity. And you, you mentioned ruthless, right? And I think that the game is extremely ruthless, especially at the level um, that you've been, you've been afforded the opportunity to coach at. How have you been able to walk the t the, that tight that tight rope of um, building strong relationships with guys who are competitors, who you recruit in the same kids, um, and you just generally want to be kind to people and try to look out as best you can? And, or, and then on the other hand, this is ruthless, this is competition, and a lot of these guys ain't out for my best interest at the end of the day. Um, how have you been able to swift through that would be the question. Uh, it's a great question. It's, it's kind of hard to describe. I use my faith. Mm -hmm. I have great faith in God. You know, I know if I do the right things and treat people the right way, you know, I think I can navigate through. You know, you see the pitfalls here and there. You see the good people, you see the bad people. Some people that you work on your on your own staff, you got to watch, you know, because they're trying to advance and they're doing stuff that that are um, probably unethical. You know what I mean? So you have to be careful of that as well. So, um, mm -hmm. but you just have to treat people right. You know, I'm, I, I, I read people very well. 
Uh, I understand what people are doing. Uh, I've been blessed to do that. I use my military background again to deal with people. You know, my last four years in the Air Force, I was a human relations specialist. I went to a school called Defense Equal Opportunity and Management Institute. It's one of the greatest schools there is on human relations. Um, it's a 15 week in residence courses. I got 23 college credits for that. It helped me greatly with my degree. Um, and it taught, it teaches you everything, man. It is it's incredible. It teaches you why people do what they do, how they do it. It teaches, you know, it gives you the, the, the Native American experience, the, the, uh, the, the black experience in America, stuff that wasn't written in, 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 our, in our books when we were growing up, you know, mm -hmm. in, in, in school. It, it, it just shares all the, all the ins and outs of why people do what they do and how they do it and why they do it. Mm -hmm. And I, that, that I, I, I lean on that a lot. I lean on why, you know, I can see things happening before they happen and I adjust and, and overcome, you know, like we do in the military. Is there anything, is there uh, books on that? I'm sure there is. You can, you can uh, get in contact with Defense Equal Opportunity Management Institute and see if they can share some information with you. It's a, uh, it's a Department of Defense school, but I'm sure people can get there that's not in the military. It's, it's down at Patrick Air Force Base in uh, Cocoa Beach, Florida. So, um, you know, how intense it was, it was a great school. But I mean, we're just right there on the beach, but we didn't get to go to the beach. <laughs> so a lot of studying, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, pre preparation to pass those tests to get through that school, which is really a great learning experience for me. But I'm sure there's books out there where you can learn and and um, um, and you know they'll tell you some tactics to use on how to re read people and how to relate to people and how to influence people. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the, it's at the end of the day, it's those type of experiences that allow for you or people in general when they get different types of or are able to learn specific types of uh, teachings that they're able to continue to separate themselves and uh, yeah. be more prepared in in many different scenarios. So that's why I was asking about these books or whatnot. Um, last few questions. I won't hold up your whole day. I know you got your, you got you got lunch with. Uh, the coach, uh, I forgot his name. Mm -hmm. Coach um, Ellsworth, yeah. So we all have, we all have, we all have gone through like, ha like bridges in our lives, right? Like just different levels, uh, different experiences, letdowns, uh, overcoming championships, losing. Um, and I just wanted you to speak on maybe a couple bridges in your life where uh, it might have really sat you down and made you reflect on, or. Um, taught you lessons and helped you grow. Uh, if you could speak on a couple of the bridges that you've had in your life. Well, I, every part of my life has been a learning experience. And uh, you look back on it as you, as, as you pass those bridges and you say, oh, that's why God had me do this. Because, you know, like in the Eminem song, you have to go over here to get over there. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Sometimes mm -hmm. it's, not, it's never a straight road to success. Mm -hmm. So, um, all your all your successes and all your failures you have to learn from them because they they're put in your life to do that you know um the it has been a ton of bridges for me you know you know all the way back from when my parents separated when i was five you know and then when i my mom remarried when i was 12 and i started moving around you know at that time i thought it was it was it wasn't right you know what i mean but looking back on it it helps me with dealing with people you know, there's not, you know, like, you can't really say, well, Grace is just a West Coast recruiter when I got a lot of kids from the East Coast. You know, mm -hmm. my children live in Atlanta. I grew up in Maryland. You know, I lived in Louisiana. You know what I mean? I lived in Kansas. You know, there's not a part of the country I can't call somebody and don't know somebody, mm -hmm. you know. But back then, you know, that was a major bridge for me, you know, moving around. I was like, why are we doing this, you know? I went to Frankfurt Middle School in Germany when I was in the eighth grade. Not too and many kids get to see that. You know and what you I have, mean? And you have no way of staying in contact with the people that you've met and the relationships that you've been able to form in those specific spots that you left. Yeah, I mean, I stay in touch with some of them. We have a, a I was just talking on Facebook. Um, we have a fuels, a fuels um, um, 
page, uh, Air Force page on Facebook, and we all stay in touch. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? From guys that live everywhere. You know, they live all over the country. Like one of them, his name is John Brisk. He hit me up. He said, Grace, I, 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 <laughs> one of my friends is a high school coach in Georgia. He just got the job. Can you Zoom call with him? You sure know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and that, yeah. And I'm going to do it because I love talking to people. You know, mm -hmm. I've been going around different high schools and talking to them. You know, I, I from my relationship, when I recruited um, Gavon Looney out of, out of Milwaukee, there's a high school coach up there who had me on Zoom last week mm -hmm. on, uh, on Wisconsin. You know, so, um, yeah, I still use all those connections that I had, even from my Air Force days and in my high school days, you know, back in Maryland. I'm still close with all those. those we have a page on Facebook for that. And obviously, we I still text with them because we're all close, you know. So we still have I still have relationships from, you know. It's not really a state that I don't have somebody there that I that I don't know that can mm -hmm. maybe go see a kid for me. Mm -hmm. I'm recruiting, you know. Wherever I go, you know, and I got friends that know people in every state too. A good friend of mine is Chad Groff. He knows everybody everywhere, you know what I mean. So like, mm -hmm. if I'm saying, hey, I'm gonna go down to Miami, hey, well, call this guy, call that guy. Get mm -hmm. to know this guy. This dude can help you down the road once you call him. Or this guy is a good friend of mine. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or that restaurant, you should go to that restaurant because I know the people that, 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 that work there. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? So those are the relationships that I have. There's not too many places, you know. And even in Australia, I got so many friends in Australia. I recruited Jonah Bolden out of Australia went to Australia, came back, went to Milwaukee and, and recruited Kavon Looney, recruiting both kids. We got both kids just off of relationships. You know well, what I mean? I, I, knew, mean I knew Kavon Looney's AAU coach. At the end of the day, all the opportunities are going to come from relationships, right? And that's very true. That's something that just not, just not for the kids to know, but the players and parents and whoever else is involved in whatever world that they live in is – you're going to get your opportunity um, off of the relationships and the people who you know, not necessarily how good you are. Now, that doesn't hurt if you're really talented or, um, you know, you bring something to the table. But relationships, relationships, relationships. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I get like a text. I get emails every day. Coach, this is a sleeper kid. I got a sleeper kid in Oklahoma. All right, I'm going to call my guy in Oklahoma and say, have you heard of this kid? Tell me about him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I got this kid down in Louisiana, all right? I know Bobby Sibley down in Baton Rouge. Call Bobby up. Bobby, what do you think about this kid? He runs Louisiana Preps. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's this real, you know, we get, I get them every day. Yeah, and I'm sure when you were at Yale, you, you did as well. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so you're right. You're so right. It is all for relationships. It's all relationships built, um, driven. Mm -hmm. um, coach, when you're recruiting, when you're, <clears throat> when you're at an AAU tournament and you're watching kids, what are you looking for? Uh, I get asked that question a lot. First of all, I want to see um, uh, if, if he's talented or not. That's, mm -hmm. that's the number one. We got to see if he's good enough. I got to mm -hmm. see if my boss will like him. My head coach would like him. Let's see if he fits into our our team. I want to see if he's coachable. I want to see how he reacts to a bad call, adversity. I want to see what his impact is on his teammates. I want to see what his impact is on his head coach. I want to see when he's up in the stands, either before a game or after a game, how he's interacting with the people around him. I want to see if, if in the layup line, how he's doing. Is he goofing off? Is he serious? And then I, I want to I wanna see um, uh, how he responds from playing the first game to the second game to the third game of a tournament. You know, if he gets tired, what does he do when he's tired? You know what I mean? There's so many things that goes on at an AAU event. You know, uh, I want to see if he's selfish or not. I want to see if he defends. I want to see if he makes the correct pass. 
You know, there's so much more than just dunking and shooting. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to see if if he knows uh, if he has basketball IQ. All of those factors come into my mind. I want to know the big question: Is he going to help me win basketball games on and off the court? Mm -hmm. So um, there's so many things that I look at, and when I go to an AAU event. I'm looking, I go to, because I've identified so many kids, as you know, that's how it works. We mm -hmm. identified so many kids. So when I walk in the gym, I'm going to their games, but I'm also looking at other kids too and hoping I see some kid that I didn't know. That's happened so many times. I walk in the gym uh, to go see a kid and then uh, I see another kid and like him. <laughs> like him so um you know that's that's that happens a lot mm -hmm. um, among all those things uh i was i had a conversation with uh coach butch pierre uh some years ago and he was telling me that the main and this it stood out to me and it stands with me and sticks with me is the main thing that he looks for um is that he wants to see when the player is off the court that the team uh morale and efficiency and um, willingness to play together all drops down a little bit. But then when he gets back on the floor, um, the game picks back up and the, game, and the team starts to look how they're supposed to look again. Yeah, his impact on, on his teammates, his impact on his coach and his impact on the game, uh, which, is, which is exactly right. Um, <clears throat> What do you, how do you feel about the season right now, college basketball? Um, and I'm asking that because, you know, teams are losing and uh, being upset, quote unquote. And I just, I, I'm not thinking too far into it because there's just so much going on. Teams haven't practiced. Um, there's no real continuity, not the continuity that you normally have. So, um, I, I mean, Somebody has to win and somebody has to lose, and you do want to win. But um, from the outside looking in, I'm just happy to see the kids play. Um, but I, I, I don't, I just don't know how much I can take it seriously at this point because it's all just like it's kind of thrown together. How are you feeling about it? Uh, I'm, I'm with you. Um, you know, that's where the adapt and overcome comes in. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Some teams are going to be better at doing it than others. Some teams are going to be or have an older group that mm -hmm. will probably do better than the younger group. You yeah, know, Rich, Kentucky's Richmond, Kentucky's, Kentucky. Yeah, Kentucky's young right now. Right, you babies. Know, you have to, yeah, you have to expect that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And mm -hmm. you know that's that's their model though, so they have to live with it. You know what I mean? Calipari has to adapt and overcome, and he will. He's a great coach. You know, mm -hmm. um, um, but I'm loving it being on TV. I think we need it as a society. Um, I'm, I'm up early in the morning, you know, uh, looking at who I'm going to watch during that day or, mm -hmm. you know, can I, can I run to the store and get my chores done before I get back to watch this game or watch that game or look at the upsets, you know, and how did that happen? You know, Riverside beating Washington last night. And, and then I'm talking to the head coach, Mikey, you know, it's his first, his first season as a head coach. So I'm congratulating him. And uh, we were texting back and forth. Uh, I was te texting with Shaka, Shaka Smart because Shaka, you know, was on the hot seat a little earlier, and he's doing well and has a chance to win the Maui Invitational, which is never easy, you know, to do. He's going up against great teams, you know. So I'm texting with him. And, so his, new, and, and his new look? Yeah, he's got hair. So I'm still getting used to that. <laughs> He's letting it grow out and stuff. So, uh, and we text during the summer. So, you know, I'm texting with the coaches after the game. Johnny Dawkins had a great win over at Auburn, you know. Um, uh, so I'm texting with him and congratulating him because people don't realize, and I know you do, these these games aren't easy to win, period, let alone do it in a, no. in a, in a pandemic. No, you know, to so win a college hard. basketball game is hard. It's not easy. Especially if you haven't practiced for six days. Or, right. And, 
whatever, whatever the, whatever the, whatever the scenario that your back is against the against the wall with, it's like it's so hard. It's so hard. That's why I, I I'm happy to see it, but uh -huh. I just can't think too much into it right now because it, it's just hard to be a real. It's hard to be a team right now. Very true. I was I went to the New Mexico State Benedictine game last night here in Phoenix. I'm talking to Coach Jans afterwards. They're living, actually living in a hotel here in Phoenix. They go practice in the ballroom of the hotel. And because in New Mexico, the, the state of New Mexico, they can't play or practice. Mm -hmm. So they're living here in Phoenix. He said they're going to try to go to L.A. and play, play some teams in L.A. this week if they'll play against them. Try. Isn't that crazy? It's like AAU. It's like he said, I'm going to call Irvine up and hopefully Irvine will play us. You know, I said, well, UCLA might need an agent. He said, I don't know if I want to play them. You know, stuff <laughs> like that. Well, because you, know you, I mean? you don't really want to – because coaches ain't trying to play a game that they don't feel like they could win. That's right. Find me and some then, teams that – Exactly right. And then for him, he's having trouble getting games because he's good. You know, they've won they've, – they've won 21 straight games and – uh and you know they haven't lost the 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 WAC title. I think they won the last six six or seven WAC titles. So so a lot of high majors don't want to play them. Why should we play them when we could play somebody that we know we're going to beat? You know. That's so. Uh, that's 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 crazy tip, business. That's typical scheduling for you, right? Very true. Nah, I don't want to play them. Find me somebody I could beat. That's James Jones. Find me find me somebody I can beat. Yeah. Coach, you're yeah. too good though. The way he wants to play us. I can't right. find any games. Yeah, that's I can't very find true. any. Very, uh, very true. Hey, coach. Coach, let's close on this. Let's say that you walked into a room or you're talking to a, a brand new team full of young adults, uh, men, women, and you just wanted to, hey, coach, can you speak to the group for a minute and a half? What, what, what are some things that come to mind that you would say um, just to help them out? And uh, further, uh, what are some things that you would say to a group right I now? I first start, start by telling them, you know, we all get 24 hours. If you want to be great at something, you have to do more with your 24. And you're going to have to sacrifice some things along the way. You can't have success without sacrifice. You know, all my journey... Uh, I wasn't always there for my family. I wasn't always there for Thanksgiving. I wasn't always there for, for I was there for Christmas for one night, and then we practiced that night, and then we went on to coach, you know. So during the week, it was a lot of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm out on the road, I got to leave on the 4th of July to go recruiting. You know what I mean? It's a lot of sacrifice. So with your success, you're going to have sacrifice. You know, with 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 your with your journey, if you really want to be good, you got to do more with your 24 mm -hmm. and then you got to do it with integrity. When doing the right thing when no one's around and you have to have discipline. You have to have those things or you're not going to have success. You might have a success for a little bit, but you won't be able to sustain it. Mm -hmm. And then you got to be able to um, get through adversity because you're always gonna have it. You cannot go through life without adversity. You cannot go through life without failure. So how do you, how do you handle that? And how do you overcome? You know, I had a, a, a very successful person who just lost his job. And he was calling me, asking me how to, how to handle that. You know, um, because he's seen me go from one job to another, you know what I mean? So, and he was, I, I was amazed he asked me the question because he was so highly successful. Mm -hmm. But that's the first time he's really had to handle it. You see what I mean? So, um, and you'd be surprised at that, you know, um, how to, uh, I, I, I would just say, you're always perfecting your checklist in every aspect of your of your journey with your family with your children with your supervisor 
you know, with, with your friends. And, you know, pick your friends wisely as well. Tell them all of that. Pick your friends wisely. Pick your friends that are going to help you, not take from you. You know, be around that. Have a small circle. Don't need to have a large circle. I've never mm -hmm. seen anybody successful with a large circle. You know, uh, network, 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 network. There's so many things that, that you're going to need to do and have other people help you along the way. And, and, and make sure you're networking with the right people. And then help people that can't help you. Be a giver. Care about them. Some of the greatest things that I've ever done is for to people that can't do nothing for me. You know, like some people are saying, Grace, why are you going over that high school? They ain't never had a Division One player. It's not about that. Mm -hmm. They're giving me an opportunity to maybe help change somebody's life that's on that team that will never play basketball after high school. I have just as much joy of helping them than to help Lonzo Ball get drafted or Aaron Naismith get drafted or Saban Lee get drafted or and we can keep going down the line, you know, and who Kavon Looney, TJ Leaf and all that. I get just as much joy of seeing a young man walk across the stage with his degree that played for me at South Mountain High School or Trevor Brown High School that never did go play basketball after. I stay in touch with them on Facebook all the time. There's a young man who's Native American. His name's Carlos Begay. He played this freshman ball for me. And he, I get on him all the time because he's a Cowboy fan. But we have some of the best conversations there is. And he, he can't help me. Mm -hmm. But then again, he does help me with my just wanting to talk with him. You know what I mean? That's, that, that helps me in that way. Mm -hmm. But I'm here for help to help him along the way, you know. And those are some of the greatest joys. And I think if you help others and you care about others, you're always going to be all right. You're always going to be all right. Will you have adversity? Yes. There's no, there's no, no perfect person out here. You know what I mean? Isn't it, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, everybody's going to have adversities. You know, Tiger Wood had adversity. Michael Jordan's had adversity. You know what I mean? We, we all have them. You know, we all have, have those things. And be good to the people around you as well. People that, that are trying to help you, be very good to them. Care about them. Care about them and you're going to be all right. You know, every time uh, a door closes, if you, if, if you handle it properly, another door will open and you'll have greater success and, 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 and uh, you'll enjoy it probably more, you know. But it's just those roadblocks on how you handle them. So those are the things, some of the things that I would tell a group of young, young people, and uh, especially uh, people that are, that are young, that are still have their life ahead of them and haven't really experienced those things. Mm -hmm. So. All right, Coach. Well, you're a man. I appreciate well, you coming on and talking to me. Um, I know I got better, and um, I'm grateful for – I mean, I'm I'm in the same position as the person that you're talking about, just reaching down and helping people. When I reached out to you, you didn't you didn't have to stay in contact and get with me different places and have conversations and help guide me in certain aspects. So um, I appreciate you. I appreciate you coming on, and um, I, I look forward to uh, continuing to build re a relationship with you. And if I can ever help you in any capacity, forever feel free. Um, and I'll definitely see you soon. And um, that's all I got. Appreciate well, you. I, I really appreciate you as well. And that means a lot to me in any way I can help you. You know, uh, I, I remember we, we were in the Final Four. And then the next thing I know, I see you in, in China. You know, so, mm -hmm. you know, this basketball take us to, to different, different places. And, um, uh, and it's, as long as we treat people right, you know, you, you, you're doing great on your podcast now. You're doing great impacting young people that you work with. You had a great experience at Yale. Um, you got to go to China, you know, which was a tremendous experience. I got to go twice 
you know, I went with UCLA and once with Cal, the UCLA experience was unbelievable too until, uh, you know, the China three incident hit. So, um, um, and then we had to deal with that, you know? So, uh, but uh, going back to you, man, I'm, I'm a big fan and any way I can help you, I really appreciate it. And when you asked me to come on your show, I was very honored and very thankful. All right, much love. I'm definitely coming to Phoenix. So again, yeah, we're gonna make that happen soon. Yeah, come on through, man. It's nice out. It's a little cool this morning. It's uh, it's up to sixty degrees, but it's always sunny out here, man. You always got a place that comes when you come to Phoenix. All right, I appreciate you, Coach. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, have a great. All right, one. thank you, man. Appreciate All right. it. Thanks thank for having you. me. All right, alrighty.